I think the baby's always been great and horrific at the same time. I think there's uh, been, you know, a large amount of people who support and uplift the community, but at the same time, I think there's always been a considerable uh, amount of people who try to tear down the community. So I think, you know, those two factors have definitely led to the way the community is. I grew up here. I've seen a lot come and go. My goal was to either work with children or work in the medical field. So here I get like the best of both worlds. I get to do both. And it's a lot of troubled teens here. And so I think like any, any extra effort or any extra support that anyone can give, and just I guess speaking for myself, um, I. You know, I feel good about that, going home, that I know that I, like, at least tried to touch somebody. Until this clinic started, a little shy of four years ago, there was no teen-specific clinic in this area. And that's not true for the Potrero Hill neighborhood or Haight-Ashbury or um, lots of the North neighborhoods. So it was underserved in terms of access. Um, that's still true in a lot of different specialized programs that are just not operating here. As the Third Street Youth Center and Clinic, we are a youth center, but we're the only adolescent health clinic in the neighborhood, and that is specifically for adolescents. And because there are turf issues for some youth and that they don't feel safe going um, long distances or sometimes even a few blocks, that it doesn't mean that even though there are a lot of services that you can always access the services and since for example since we're not mobile um, we can't get to youth and if youth can't get to us then we can't provide the services so I think that sometimes access to the services that exist um, creates youth being underserved we have the highest rates of chlamydia and gonorrhea in San Francisco um, we have the highest uh, teen parent rate and so just meaning that we need more services and support services in general. So the rate of sexually transmitted diseases is much higher once you cross over 3rd Street or cross over Bayshore than it is on the other side for reasons that don't make a lot of sense. Um, so STDs would be one because there's a big gap in the rates for that. Um, teen pregnancy would be another one. But then there are also lots of problems that kids know that their parents have, um, like heart disease and high blood pressure and obesity and diabetes that they don't think of as their problem, but lots and lots of kids have the early signs of those problems already. So they don't really think of it, but I think of those things too. So I'm worried about lots of chronic diseases as well. Mostly, it's very, very um, poor habits. So there are very few people who can stay healthy while eating mostly McDonald's, hot Cheetos, and soda. Um, very few people. And it's even less likely that you can be healthy eating that way when you already have the genetics to have trouble handling sugar. So if your parents or grandparents have diabetes, it means that you probably aren't someone who should eat tons of sugar and gain weight because you won't be able to handle it, right? You're going to get sick. There are a lot of different health risks that youth face and being that we're um, the only adolescent health clinic um, in the neighborhood, we, we see a lot of them. Um, there are a lot of nutrition issues. We have, um, and historically that's been a lot about food access. Uh, in 
community, which is right above where we're at right now, which is in, we would call the flatlands of the Bayview. Um, up on the hill, there are no stores at all in, uh, in the hill part of the Bayview District, Bayview Hunters Point District. There's not one store, not even a corner store. We see a lot of youth who are pre-diabetic. I mean, really, because of how their nutrition um, intake has been, that they are really on the road to, to having some significant health issues. It's like McDonald's and fast food and, you know what I'm saying? So here, we try to, try to focus them on eating right and, you know, living a healthy life. Even though there is a gentleman who sells fruits and vegetables in this district, doesn't mean that's where people are going to buy fruits and vegetables at all. They would rather go get a Capri Sun. They would rather go get uh, hot chips as opposed to fruit. The people that understand fruit and vegetables come in and get them some stuff and go home and cook it and feed it to everybody. Rather it's going and getting a box of something that is only enough for one person really and, and trying to make a meal out of it. It's very expensive. So so that's what I'm that's why I'm here and I, I really want you guys to figure out how to do it. Um, and and to see that it gets done and I don't but I don't have how can you pay for it? That's the question. Yeah, how, how is it, how do you pay for something like that? People have a lot of potential for access. The problem is it's not as simple as just having a building. The insurance is extremely complicated and thanks to um, some of the shenanigans of the last little while of the federal government, it's been awfully hard to get and awfully hard to stay on. So people get kicked off, it's complicated, they have to do various papers for a while, you had to bring a birth certificate and a social security card. It, there are plenty of hoops to jump through in order to get what you want. And if you don't have the resources, the time, the energy to jump through all the hoops, you are not going to get it. In any type of crooked system or society, if you're unhealthy, um, if you don't have health care, if you don't have the resources that um, every human being should be, you're less likely to care about more informed situations. If you're sick continuously and you have asthma because of where you grow up and because of the uh, sewage plants that are only put in your community, um, you're less likely to care about the voting process, to care about your rights. And so in that, I think, you know, health care is extremely important because a healthy person um, an unhealthy person, rather, cannot uh, accurately uh, be concerned or interested in, in the politics that go on in their uh, community, in their world. I never really saw the connection between health care and um, poor communities of color, um, and, just, and just America in general. And I think that any time you have a system in which, you know, we're kind of... Um, really excited as people of color right now about Barack Obama. You know, I, th I think we should celebrate in some sense, um, but we also have an understanding that uh, he also answers to money and he also answers to power and that people have an, uh, the, uh, the responsibility to um, force their government to make change. Um, the people shouldn't rely upon their government to kind of be the 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 factors that lead to the changes, the people who should put pressure on the government.